right. Uh, so we are going to talk about uh, some use effect and fetch stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share because we're going to be using the same uh, same old thing that we've worked on the last couple times. And meeting controls. Um, cool. So let's go ahead and crack into it. We have, um, there we go. Uh, we have our tarot card displayer application here. Uh, we are working off of this data set here, and that just has a, a list of cards. <clears throat> um, I think I should just be able to JSON serve this stuff up. So um, lay out what we're going to talk about, I guess. Uh, I would like to uh, set this up as a JSON server so we can hit it <clears throat> as an API instead of just importing it. Uh, and that'll let us do all the all the JSON restful stuff. Uh, so turn turn this into a server, uh, which would be trivial, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, turn this into a server. Uh, then instead of loading in the module um, here, instead of just loading it in as static data, uh, we'll be doing a fetch when it loads up. And we'll talk about how we use the use effect hook to do that. And uh, then we'll, you know, we're displaying the data already. Uh, I think I'd like to hook up some buttons and or forms or something, uh, maybe use our create card to uh, show how to hook up that to an event. It's pretty much the same. And uh, yeah, then we'll just kind of go go from there and see, uh, see where folks are. Um, actually, before we jump in uh, with this stuff, is there, anything that you'd like to talk about or ask about um, either stuff that we've done up to this point that you've discovered doesn't make sense <laughs> once you once you've tried to look into it um, or anything that you've seen that's kind of fuzzy on the use effect and fetch side that we can focus on here Knock something off my desk um, just uh, a, a curiosity uh when it when we're doing um use effect right mm -hmm. does, does it follow like a similar convention as states when it comes to like in which component should it live or is there like a best practice just use effect you know do the fetches at the top level in the app or is there like a best practice for where to put it yeah that's a really good question um I think for so for right now we're going to be using use effect to load our load our data in, um, and so that's for the way that we're doing it now. Uh, that's probably going to be at the top level all the time. Um, there are definitely cases where you can use use effect to do stuff besides loading data, uh, and that's going to be you know as as needed in your application. Um, yeah, that's a really good question, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it as as we go along. I think. Um, and if I touch upon something that kind of brushes up against that, uh, call it out, we'll, we'll dive in. Cool. Um, any other stuff before we jump in? So I was doing the like pig lab thing mm -hmm. and I was trying to put a H1 element in like the return on one of the functions in a component. And every time I would put it in, it would read it as as if it was looking for like another component, like that new card form, for example. And I couldn't get it to read it as an H1, like HTML element. Huh. Um, can, can you tell me what it, what it means to, uh, what how you can tell it was trying to read it as a different kind of component? It was uh, turning green like those and- uh, Put it like an H1 here. It would... Yeah, and then it would give me some error saying can't find whatever component. Blah, blah, blah. Huh. Was it a capital H by any chance? No, I, I tried I tried making a capital, tried making it lowercase, tried everything, tried Googling it. I couldn't figure wow. it out. Uh, I'm really curious about that, and I'd love to take a look at it. Uh, but let's take a look at it after this. Uh, I'm okay. super curious about that. That's really, really interesting. Yeah. Oh, um, ooh, I'm treated. Cool. Yeah. Uh, grab me afterwards, uh, or post it in the channel, and we'll we'll talk about it after this. Interesting. Hmm. Um. Cool. 
Uh, other other questions before we jump in? Awesome. Um, cool. So let me go ahead. I think because we're using um, NPM, uh, we shouldn't have the same issue that we had with the light ser live server. Um, light server does not have that problem. So I'm going to move the data JS over here into the public folder. Um, we can really just move it into the let's move it into the main folder actually, so it's out of out of the whole thing. So <clears throat> if we up open our terminal here and look at what we got here, here's our data JS. Uh, so I should just be able to do JSON server data JS. <laughs> yeah, I should probably make it just a JSON file instead of a JavaScript file, huh? Uh, there we go. And there might be some multi JSON in there. What's it called? Mm. Expected. Really? Come up if I do this. I just save it and then we name it JSON. Oh, I try to init it as. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, I should probably give it a name too. Nope, watch. That's what I want. Nope. What is this? Uh... You're doing data.js at the bottom, right? Oh, yep, that's right. There we go. Easy peasy if you're not a dummy. Uh, cool. So this should um, pop open. Uh, so if we look at our <coughs> local host here, uh, yeah, cool. So it is serving up our goodness here. Um, maybe we might do something with the extension, maybe. Um, so we can see that's the data we're going to get. Uh, if we, so this is actually going to. Yeah, um, let me wiggle this just a little bit. And instead of calling it that, I'm gonna just bring the cards to the top level. That means I gotta take off that. Let's try that again. Cool. So now I should be able to get cards there out of the tarot. Great, that's a little bit nicer. Uh, and so if I get, these don't have IDs. Oh no, that's fine, we can, we can work it out. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um, oh, no IDs. That's really annoying. Anyway, we'll figure that out when we get to it. Right now, we can get that data. Um, do I want to try and fix this at all? Mm, I don't know. Um, let's, let's just go to the top here. Cards. Yeah, I kind of do. Mm, no, it's got a number. Well, Wow, uh, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to show you the power of uh, regular expressions here. So every card should have a number. Um, are the numbers unique, though? Probably not. No, OK, never mind. But we won't worry about it right now. Because we're learning about fetch, not uh, data, data mangling. Cool. So now uh, if we do an NPM start here, open up a new one, uh, it should come up with an error. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Why would you open over there? <laughs> um, cool, let's bring it up here. There we go. Uh, cool, so yeah, we don't have our data in our source anymore. So let's take that out there. And we are still gonna need a, a card list here. So let me call it that. So, um, so when you're fetching data, we, we're always gonna start off with uh, without our data. So we need to make sure that our state is starting off in a state that uh, will work if it's empty. So I'm gonna start off with uh, an empty array because we're gonna be getting an array of things from our card list. Um, yeah, so this way we're still mapping over stuff, uh, but we need to map over an array. So if we just start off with 
undefined, uh, that's not going to be any good. So this should give us less error. Excellent. So it's not giving us any cards, but uh, that card list is zero. In fact, if we look at our component inspector here, we should be able to see that, uh, yeah, there's our state, empty list. Perfect. And so we're mapping over that empty list, uh, and it's all good. So now we want to get stuff in there. I don't think that counts all anymore. Cool. So I don't need this anymore. So let's talk about use effect. Um, use effect is a hook, uh, which means it's a sort of built-in React uh, function that you can hook into. And it's called a hook because there's we don't really talk about that, that. We don't really talk about it that much anymore with functional components. But components have uh, the sense of a life cycle, uh, right? They they are created, they are uh, attached to the page or mounted. They call them. Things happen while they're alive. They're updated and rendered, uh, and then they are dismounted and destroyed. So these are called hooks because they hook into part of the lifestyle. So the use state hooks into the rendering part of the lifecycle. So it knows when the state changes, re-render it and re-display it and get rid of it when it goes away. So the use effect hook is going to be hooked into when it is rendered. Again, kind of like the uh, use state. So uh, let's just bring in use effect here. Uh, and it's called use effect um, because Functional components kind of lean on this uh, functional programming paradigm. And what that means is we want to use functions, not us right now, but in this, in this paradigm, we want to use pure functions. Pure functions always, or pure functions will take something in and they will output something and they won't have any side effects. So they won't uh, modify some variables outside of the function. They won't do unexpected things. But sometimes you want those. You want something to write something to a file or send something to a server or log out a message or you know, make a fetch, for example. And these are, these are called side effects in that functional program paradigm. And so we have a way to hook those effects into our lifecycle. And we do that with use effect. So uh, use effect is a function that we can call. Just like every other hook, it starts with use, use effect. And we just call it straight up here. So we're saying in, in our function, when you're running it to get the stuff that you're rendering, call use effect. And use effect has two parts. Uh, the first part is a function that's going to run. And it's going to run. So use effect gets triggered every time the component gets rendered. But we only want it to be triggered when it is rendered the first time. So use effect has a nice way to say the, the use effect itself runs every time, but the function that we give to the use effect doesn't necessarily run every time. So we're going to give it a function here. And then we give it a, a, a list of states that we say, if this state changes, then run this effect again. So that might be useful if you know we maybe we're keeping the current thing we're displaying in the state and that needs to be fetched from a server. So when that current thing state changes, we can put you know, current thing, that state in here, and then it knows, ah, when current thing changes, run this function again and do our, do our fetch again or whatever. In our case, we only want to run it once when it renders the first time. So we just give it an empty array and say, hey, anytime all of these none <laughs> things change, re-render, which makes sure it will never re-render again. So that's mostly how we're always going to be using it. There are, you know, like I said, there is clearly use cases for it. I don't, I don't know if you will run into those use cases while maybe, maybe in your final project, I don't know. But just know that that's there for that reason. And you can use it for that reason. So the juicy part here, function. So use effect runs a function. And often we'll just put the function in here. So we'll say, um, it can be a function definition or an arrow function. Uh, I tend to use arrow functions. I 
don't know why, just preference. But you can also just give it a function name, like we've been doing for um, you know, the handlers or anything down here, right? So I'm going to choose a function name here, and I'm just going to call it uh, fetch cards. And that's going to be the function that we run. And I like it. I used to be a big fan of putting it in there explicitly. I think I've changed my mind and I want it. I like doing it this way now, just because again, it's a little bit easier on, on the eyes, on the brain. So I just like, instead of use effect, all this stuff, I can say use effect, the thing that's happening. So when, when it reloads the first time, fetch the cards. Great. I know, I know what that means. And that means I'm going to write a function. And it doesn't take any parameters. So the function is an empty parameter list here. And so here's, I'm just going to do a, a console log just to make sure everything is working right because you know how things go. Awesome. So uh, now that it's changed and we should be able to see. Hey, cool. Um, it's running twice. Why? Here's why. In development mode, React has recently, in the last, I think it's just the last year and change, year and a half maybe, uh, they've changed the development mode, which means when you're running it on your local machine and you're not posting it somewhere, it will render each component twice the first time, once to like hook into uh, some development stuff, either tests or diagnostics or error checking, and then it will render it again for real. Basically, a lot of the stuff you're going to read says it will render first and then render when the state changes. When you're in development, it's going to render first twice. When you uh, eventually host it somewhere and say, you know, it's set to production or something, it will only run the once. So if you see something rendering twice, don't sweat it. Uh, but here we are. We're, we're rendering. We can ignore that first one. And uh, we're great. So we know that that use of it hook is kicking off at least once. So now we want to actually make it do something. So we have an empty list in cards and we want to get our cards from our API, which, hey, we have here. Uh, and our API is this URL here that we checked out before. So that's the same one that we're looking at. And uh, I was going to put this up here. Not import, I'm going to put it, uh, make it const. I could do it up here or I could do it down here. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to put it up here. Cool. So that's our API. And this fetch is going to look exactly like all the fetches that we've done before. So I'm just going to do fetch uh, from our cards API, CRAS API. And it's a get, so we don't need to pass out any options. And so I can just do our then, like we always do. Uh, do the little JSON stuff. And then I will do our, I'm just going to console log it, just to make sure we're getting it. So again, I'm just passing that console log as the function. So then this stuff is exactly the same. Uh, in fact, you know, this function is exactly the same as one that would live in our plain JavaScript apps. So look at that, it rendered. And now it's logging out all of our stuff. Fantastic. So we've got our data and now we just need to set the cards. And since this is just a function that's going to take the stuff, we can just pass that function in and that'll run it. And so this is, this is the same as, you know, that's identical. Um, if it makes more sense to you to write it out longhand, that's totally fine. That just reads better to me. Uh, but either way, it's totally fine, whichever way works for you. And uh, of course, you can, if you need to do more stuff in there, uh, you can put more stuff in there. But uh, like when we did it in our plain JavaScript, we would often have to <coughs> like write an extra little function in there to you know, maybe set it to a global variable and then render it out. React takes care of that for us now. So all we need to do is do the set cards and then we'll see that when the cards have been changed, React, since we're using state, knows to re-render everything. So it's gonna run this function again. 
it's going to see this user effect and say, oh, cool, I need to do something. But wait, I already ran it once and we have an empty dependency list here. So I'm not going to run it again. If we didn't have that list, it would just re-render and fetch and set every single time. And we'd get a quickly get an error for an infinite loop. Uh, but that's a lot of big talk. Let's see if it actually works. Hey, it actually works. Cool. So there we are. And again, if we look in our components, there's all our stuff in state. Um, and it lists our user effects down here. That's just the hooks. Um, cool. So super easy, <laughs> super simple. Um, the, the only new tricky part is using this use effect. So we can't just say, when you run, do this thing, because um, it'll run every time it renders. So we don't want to do that. Um, yeah, so that's that. Otherwise, everything else is exactly the same. Um, is there anything that's basic to talk about here? I don't think so. Uh, do we have any questions about any of this stuff, or like where stuff goes, or what stuff means? You feel confident you could do this <laughs> yourself uh, in your app? Maybe, maybe not. I, I feel good about like doing a get. You uh -huh. know, pretty, pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, just thinking ahead, like if we were to um, post, right? We have forms on a lot of these React apps. Mm -hmm. uh, would like in your array, right? Mm -hmm. um, Instead of it being empty, would you do like, you know, put the form in there every time the form, well, maybe not every time the form changes, but like every time something in the form happens. Yeah, could... excellent, excellent, excellent question. So uh, let, let's walk through that a little bit. Um, so the question is uh, basically how do we implement a post, right? So it's, we want it to both update the, you know, we want to update the server and update our React application too, assuming that the post happens. So let's take a look at what we got. We've got our new card form. Pop that open. And so just to review the way the card form works is this is our component that's generating our card form here. We are, you know, outputting the form where uh, we're keeping we're maintaining the state of the form. So it was a quote unquote fully, fully controlled form, which means that the state is always gonna represent the stuff we see on the screen in the form and vice versa. We have a submit event, which goes on the form, not on the button. <laughs> on the form, not on the button. And <clears throat> right now uh, we're preventing the default and we are creating a new card and we are calling the create new card prop that was passed in. That create new card calls this function, which sets the state with the new cards. Uh, and that works so far. So we want to change this. So right now it's only affecting the front end. So we want it to, let's talk through what we want. So it's still going to hook into the on submit. We still want to create a new card. But now instead of just calling that function directly, we want to put that stuff in the database first. So this is just going to be a fetch again. And hmm, this is no, this is not the time to talk about it, but I have a, so right now the cards API, we need to put the, the const for the cards API in, um, in each place it's going to be used, uh, which is mm, smells a little bit bad to me, but we'll talk about a way around that. No, oh, maybe next week, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to do our fetch. And it's going to be to the cards. No, nope, not the whole thing. Cards API. So we're making a fetch there. We're doing a post. So we need our headers, or our, we need our options, including our headers. And that's going to be uh, accept. Cool. So there's our headers. And we need to tell it the method. Let's just put that up top here so it's the easiest thing to read. 
great. Uh, and now we need to give it the uh, body. So we're going to give it the stuff that we're adding, which is going to be our new card. And we have the body. We um, need it to be a string, not an object. So we need to JSON and the it. Stringify it. And that will uh, that will send it along. So we're going to do our fetch. Uh, it's going to send a post with our headers and the, the the stringified new card. This will add it to the new database, but it won't add it to our front end. So uh, I'm going to comment this out for a second. And yeah, let's just let's just see what it does to our database first. So our database is over here. Um, and it's just going to add it to the end. So let's keep take a look at the end. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, like our better fool, like our there. Cool. So, so if we get that <laughs> internal server error, I, I bet. I bet. What do we got? Uh, so there's nothing in our that one there might give us an internal server error. New card form 37. Patch cards API. So something's wrong in there. Uh, did our <laughs> question, did our data change? Nope. Okay, cool. So mm, there we go. Uh, cannot read properties of undefined reading ID. Yep. Okay, cool. Let's do this then. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to edit our data a little bit. I'm going to get rid of all the cards that are not major arcana. So they'll all have unique numbers. So many. So many cards. Um, I think that's the last one. Yeah. Cool. We'll get rid of all those. So now we only have the major arcana to worry about. Now I'm gonna do our, our fun stuff. So the numbers should be unique here. Oh boy, uh, this is you'll find yourself doing this a lot as some of you already know. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do it in a fun way with regular expressions. Um, regular expressions are super powerful and super useful. I use them all the time um, in editing and project stuff. Um, they are optional in this program, but man, are they, are they useful. They look kind of like garbage, but you know, so does uh, music if you don't know how to read it. Uh, it take, takes a, definitely takes a while to get fluent in it, but once you do, you're gonna love life. So um, talking through what I'm gonna do here, everyone has a number and those numbers, as far as I know now are unique. So I want to grab that number and add an ID that is that number without the quotes. So. First off, using regular expressions, I'm going to find that. Um, and I'm going to search on uh, number. And then I want to, so here's the number, right? Number zero. Uh, I want to get this. So I'm going to capture it in a group. And I don't just want the zero. I want any number. So that's a backslash n plus. Uh, and that means the plus means one or more. And the backslash n means digits. Oh, that's not it. Nope, I want a D. <laughs> D digits. There we go. That works. So any 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 digits it's going to catch. So even double digits should catch there. Great. So I want to get those, and then I want to replace it with what we've got here. So oh boy. Um. Yeah, I'm just going to type it out. I'm going to replace it with the same thing, and the stuff we capture in parentheses we can refer to with a dollar sign variable. So in this case, it's the first one. So it's gonna be one. Um, I'm gonna add a new line with our ID and then just give it that without the quotes. And maybe that will work. I don't know if that slash n is gonna give us an actual thing. I'm just gonna give it a space right now. Uh, let's see if that does it for once. Hey, yeah, so cool. I'm just gonna hit this button to do it to all of them. Great, I'll just hit option shift F to format. No, oh, I, I did it all of them twice. Uh, there we go, cool. So now we should have IDs on all of them. Um, don't worry if you didn't catch all of that. Uh, it is advanced 
sorcery. Uh, it's fun, fun to fun to fun to have, uh, but really useful in cases like this. So now we have IDs on all of our things, and now we should be able to post. Let's try that again. Bam. Post cards. Do, do, do got that there. Let's go to the end. Hey, awesome. There's our data. Gave us a, an ID because this one is 21. Great. Um, cool. So uh, that's kind of has a has a number that's random. Awesome. Um, great. I'm gonna leave that that way because it doesn't matter right now. So uh, we posted. Nothing showed up here yet. So. We know that post works now after debugging that. I'm going to drop that. Uh, it's restarted. Cool. So now, now that we know that we're posting successfully to our database, we want to add the thing that we posted to our page. So we have this create new card. And this is where I'd like to probably think about renaming stuff because we're not actually creating a new card here, right? The creation already happened in the fetch. So I think what we want to do is Oh, I don't know, add new card, maybe. Still still don't like that very much, but. So I'm gonna call it add new card. And that means we have to change it up here. And this is super fuzzy, <laughs> but um, cool. So <laughs> now that we have this, um, we could just go ahead and add the card but it's possible that we rely on the IDs to, for something. So I would like to uh, do our JSON dance and then get whatever the response is. And I think it's going to be the JSON that's returned. Let's double check. So it should look something like that data that we got in there. So let's refresh this. Cool. Um, and so when we add that, we should see the data come up over here. Yeah, cool. So when you do a post, what is returned um, from that fetch is, is a promise. And inside that promise is a response. And inside that response is the data that it created. So this is important when we are rendering it in JSON in a list because it needs a key. And that key is going to use that ID. So now that we're getting that, now we can go ahead and call our uh, add new card. And that's going to, again, this is the same as this. Um, exactly the same where the function is getting the JSON is passing it to that. Uh, that's just adding an extra, extra steps. So I'm just going to do this here. Uh, and so now we should have the full cycle. We should, let me actually delete that from our data. Cool. Um, that it was in the database. So now data is reloading. Now we should be able to hit our form. It's going to do this submit. Um, it's going to create the new thing. It's going to do the fetch with the post, put it in the database. When it does that, that post is going to return the thing that was created. Um, otherwise, we you know we might want to do a you know console error that error, um, and so that if there is an error. Um, we will be able to see it, uh, and it and we can do other stuff or send a message to the user. Um, right now, I'm pretty confident that's going to work. So it'll do that. It's going to call add new card, which we have passed in here as a prop here. And this one is just doing our changing the state. So it's going to update the state with a new card. And I'm going to put it at the end because that's the way the database is doing it, just to keep consistent. So it will uh, set the state to the current set of cards with new card at the end. Once the state updates, uh, it's going to re-render. So it's going to run this function again. It's going to hit that use effect, but it, we're saying don't sweat it. So nothing has changed. So it's just going to re-render that with new cards and we should be good. So uh, there's our 22 cards right now. Here's this added new card and there's our card at the end. Uh, you can see that reflected in our database. Um, cool. So that is the process. Your question <laughs> was um, <clears throat> where where are we like keeping track of that state and stuff? Is that kind of like what you're asking? 
yeah, and, and sort of like th thus far, right? This post is not inside of the effect hook like our get was. Um, I was expecting it to be inside of one. Is it going to? Does it do posts not do that? Yeah. So the the use effect um, that that only runs when the component renders, and if we give it this array, it only does it the first time. So um, that's just for doing our initial load. Anything else? Um, submitting forms, hitting buttons. I don't know. You want to do a fetch on a mouse move? Move. I'm not going to stop you. Um, that's all just going to be attached to the event listeners. So that that use effect is only for something that we want to do when when the thing loads. Okay. Yeah. And so if we want to do a post or you know, delete something with a button or whatever, that's just going to be on the on the event handler, just like just like any other thing in JavaScript. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. I mean, it, it's it easier than <laughs> way way easier than than the other way. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like really, like this. This is mostly what you're going to be doing um, for you know, for the duration of this course. Um, you you may you may design yourself a, a more complicated situation that you need to do use effects with, but um, if you do, we'll talk about it. <laughs> and basically, it's like put whatever states you want to do that on in there, and you're good. Um, yeah, in general, just default to making an empty array, and then if you need to change it, uh, we'll we'll figure it out. Um, cool. So that's the get, <laughs> the fetch. Um, in in the old in the in the old um, lecture schedule, the get was a two hour lecture. I don't know why, um, <laughs> but uh, here we are. So um, so now we know how to do a get. We know how to do a post. Um. If we want to do, you know, let's do a delete while we're here. Why not? Um, the easier one to do. Uh, but before we do that, um, any other? What what questions do you have about this 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 stuff? Where can we learn to do what you did with the uh, the? Um... Regular expressions, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it is. Uh, kids these days have a lot easier. Um, regex is usually what you're going to be looking for, and there's awesome tools now available. Um, before we had to do it both ways uphill, uh, and now you can you know learn it by just trying it out. So. This is a regular expression, and I can I can read this. Uh, usually, different languages have different implementations. Um, they have all kind of settled down into a common one now. But basically, if you're doing it in JavaScript or Python, you're going to see these slashes around it that says it's a regular expression. Um, this G means make it global. Oh, look, make, oh, wow, oh, kids these days. Um, that slash G says do it every time, you know, otherwise, if we take off that G, it's only going to match the first one. But we want to be G, and it defaults that in uh, VS Code. So this one says, uh, oh, we're starting a group with a parentheses. That group is going to capture um, any, you know, a, a single, any capital letter. And then it's going to close that group. And then afterwards, that uh, we're, it's going to match a word character. Oh, it says right there. Any alphabetical underscore, and it's going to be one or more. So plus is one or more. Star is zero or more. Question mark is zero or one. Um, that is just something you'll learn. Um, but this one lets you do it in real time. So if I wanted to, you know, I don't get something that was only uh, only three letters long or four letters long, I could say, oh, only match a capital letter and two letters, uh, and I'll do that. Um, so this is a nice way to kind of do it hands-on, explore. Um, there are other, yes, please. please. Um, yeah, Regex 101, I think it's still pretty good. This has a similar thing um, and it has a little cheat sheet down here. And pretty much it, it looks like garbage, um, but once you kind of learn because of, because of the way that regular expressions 
expressions are kind of parsed, it can always be read left to right, no matter what. And so basically when you hit a character, whether it's a bracket or a parentheses or a star or whatever, as long as you're reading it left to right, you can always just kind of piece it out and figure out what it is. But there, there's a bunch of a bunch of resources online. Uh, there's cheat sheets. Uh, yeah. Uh, and basically it's like anything else, it's a matter of practice. You gotta do your scales. And one, <laughs> one fun way to do that is with the regex crossword. <laughs> um, and so this will actually teach you how things match by going through crossword puzzles to do it. Uh, and it's, it's super fun. So yeah, uh, if you get bored and you wanna mess around with it, this is always super fun. But yeah, uh, just Google for regex and there's so many tutorials now. Um, yeah, I, I literally find myself using it in every project I work on, at least. Even if I'm not using it in the program, I use it in the editor to munch up data or fix my dumb mistakes. <laughs> um, did that help out? The, and I think I've actually seen it before because oh, awesome. I use it for a video game. It's oh, easy. yeah. yeah. Cool, cool, yeah, um, yeah. And I like I'm I'm a weirdo that like just super enjoys them. So um, some some people just think they're hellish. But potato, potato. Um, cool. Uh, anything else about the use effect or fetch stuff? Um, just out of curiosity, like I don't expect this to be in the like challenge or anything, but like, what would some other uh, example use cases be um, for for use effect, right? Besides fetching data from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the one the one that comes to mind most often is uh, say you have a component. So say we had a component here that you know, these cards had a click on them, and we clicked on it, and it displayed you know, the details for that card in a component that component might have a use effect in it. And, you know, let's just uh, see if we can make something look reasonable now. Card detail. Cool, I'm gonna import use effect. So uh, this is going to, you know, return Cool. So this is going to use detail, and we're going to set a state, right? We're going to have use state there. Why is it red? Uh, there's no function. There's no function. There we go. Perfect. So we're going to keep a state and say we'll call it. You know, we're going to grab, or actually, we don't even use state because we're going to pass in the. Oh, if we don't use a state, that's not going to work. Um, Uh, yeah, because we, we were bringing the details here and the props and then render out the details here. Um, if, hmm, if we were, I like make this make sense without being completely contrived. So if we had, for some reason, uh, maybe we'd taken the ID, right? And uh, we don't have all the details and we would do a, nope, because that's not what we want either. So I don't know. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Um, gosh, yeah, everything would be props there. What's the, what's the example that I usually use? Oh, maybe if, mm, yeah, maybe. So if we had a, a component that was a search form. We have a search form in our header, and that was uh, do search, and that brought back something. And uh, we used we would keep like a, a search term.
in here. Set it to an empty string. So then we might have in use effect, um, you know, uh, do search. And so it would start off by doing a search on nothing and bringing back nothing. And then maybe we have search term here. So now we know, you know, this would be do search. So it starts off empty. We have our search, search bar, uh, search set, you know, um, what do we call it? Get term, reset term. Yeah, we'll call it set, set search term. Cool. And in that component, it has a field and a button that when they when they hit it, it's going to call this search term and change this here. So now we know that when when we change that search term, and it could be like we could have a form in here that changes it. Maybe it does it on change, so it fires off a search when as they type um, a little bit. You you would do some. Uh, what do they call it, debouncing for that. But yeah, so basically when the search term gets changed, where the use effect is gonna kick off and it's gonna say, oh, did the card list change? No, did the search term change? Yes. And then we're gonna do that search and it'll render that stuff out. Um, and then when it renders it, it's gonna come back and run this again. It's gonna say, cool, uh, did the search term change? No, not this time it didn't. So I'm not gonna run that search again. That's just gonna display that. Um, yeah, it's, I, I, I definitely have used it in real projects. I'm trying to remember what for. Um, I think actually, I, oh, I think I've actually used it for login stuff. So I would have like the, you know, I'd have the you know, const user info here. And that would be you know, an empty object probably. And then, you know, when I'd say, um, oh, how, what's, what's the logic there? So when I put in the user info, when I change the user info, it would try to like do a login or something. Um, or is the, oh no, that's not what it was. That's, uh, it's all coming back slowly, slowly. Uh, I would have uh, is logged in. Set is logged in. Set that to false, uh, and then I'd have uh, yeah, do do stuff, and so I would have somewhere in here uh, either you know a login form or a, uh, you know a Google login or something, and when that comes back, that would change. And then it would say, okay, cool, do the use effect. If we're logged in, then we're gonna do some other stuff, probably do some fetches um, and all that stuff. Yeah, so there, there, there are instances you can use it. Um, there are probably other ways to do it without using use effect. Um, just it's, this one's tricky because it is something you need to kind of figure out through experience, but it happens so infrequently, it feels like that experience is kind of hard to come by. Um, so it's kind of a struggle the first couple times you might have to, um, or you might never have to, who knows? But yeah, the, does that kind of help at all? Yeah, yeah, definitely, good example. <laughs> it's really like the struggling to come up with an example kind of shows you how, <laughs> how, how not, not often it is. Um, cool, 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 cool. It's time to bunch of garbage. There we are. Um, cool, what else we got? Um, awesome. You know, I'm going to leave the, the, uh, if you want to do a delete or edit, I'm going to leave that as an exercise to the user. Uh, I'm going to, I think I want to show you something cool that is not in the curriculum, uh, secret, secret bonus information. Uh, and that is writing your own custom hooks. So there are a bunch of hooks that come in built in with React. However, there may be some things that, that you want to do that uh, involve the 
even that don't involve the life cycle. Maybe it's just a data thing. Maybe it's just a function library, uh, but you can write your own custom hooks. And I'm going to try and do this from memory. I haven't done it in a while, so <laughs> bear with me. So uh, notice how I have the cards API here and I have the cards API here. Um, and in fact, I'm doing a fetch in both places, a fetch here and a fetch there. And it might be nice to wrap that somehow in a, in a helper function. So I think I'd like to write a custom hook to do that. Um, let's do it called, oh, let's call it use, use fetch. I'll see if I can remember how this works. Um, so it's going to export a function. And this function is going to return whatever we do here. Uh, and again, bear with me while I try and rack my memory to remember this. So let, let's think about what we want to, how we want to use it first. So in this case, I'd like to get rid of this because I don't want to have to put that in every component that's going to use it. So base case, I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, so I want to get rid of that. I want to abstract that away. And I, I'm going to put it right here. So number number one, if I just wanted to like use that to return the API string, we can totally do that. Um, but I think we can do better. So instead of having the API up here, I want to be able to say, um, do a fetch. And in fact, you know what? Writing out this res JSON stuff every time gets kind of tedious. So if I can abstract that away, that would be cool too. So I think what I want to do is have use fetch give me uh, basically a, uh, a, a, a fetcher function, um, maybe called fetch, fetch cards. So I would like to say here, I'm just going to comment this out for now. Not, not everything. Uh, I think I would like to say here something like, I'd have to import it. Come on. Uh, so I'd like to say something that looks like fetch cards cost equals um, use fetch for starters. So if I so I'm gonna say if I call it with no arguments here, um, just have it basically return this function. So let's see what that looks like. So here I want to return a function. Um, I'm going to return it like this. It doesn't need a name. So I'm going to have it, uh, what's that? Return that, return that, return that. Do, do. Yeah, I don't need that. Um, cool. So this should, when I call it use fetch, return me this function that does fetch to the cards API. So that means I don't need to keep track of the API here, which is cool because if I need to do it in a dozen components, and it changes, I don't want to update it in a dozen components. Uh, and also, I could do some fun logic on here, like, oh, if it's on development or staging or testing, hit a different URL. But right now, we're just doing the URL here. Um, so it's going to fetch to that API. Um, and then I want it to do something when it's done. So this is where I'll put in a callback, maybe, and say, uh, so this function is going to take a callback function. It's going to fetch from the API. It's going to process the JSON for us. And then it's going to return. Is it going to return the thing with the, is it just going to do the thing? That's one way to do it. Um, let's look at it this way. I think I might want to change it a little bit. So in this case, I would just say, um, I don't think I need to change anything, right? Where was fetch cards? It's fetch. Fetch cards there above that. I think this might work the way it is. I'm like 80% sure. So defined this use fetch thing. It's going to take a callback. Aha, the callback. Um, 
use effect fetch cards. What do we want it to do? Set cards. Mm -hmm. So we want it to set cards when it's done. So in this case, we want use effect to call that function and say set cards when done. So we're getting that function in our use effect, we're calling it, and we're just calling our fetcher and saying, when you're done, set the cards. And so this will fetch to that API, do our JSON conversion for us, and then call that callback. Okay, I'm like 85%. No, destroy is not a function. Cool. Um, awesome. Where, where is that? Um, doo -doo -doo. Made some bad errors. It's like you were using effect async. Oh, it's returning a promise. Okay. Um, instead, call the call write the async function and return it immediately. Call it immediately. Hmm. 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 Use effect async that or return a promise. Instead, you write the async function inside your effect and call it immediately. I feel like that's what I'm doing. Or maybe I do this um, instead of having it return that arrow function. Uh, I'm just going to re return. Return function. That. And so it's just going to call that. It's not going to return anything. It's just going to do the fetch for us. OK, now I'm like 90%. Better. <laughs> no errors. Uh, did we get a, any real issues here? No. Mm, I, I swear I know how to do this. Uh, so let's let's start debugging here. Um, use fetch. Oh, here's what it is. Um, right. I don't want to just use fetch. I want to call it. So when I create, ah, this is what thing. I'm creating the fetcher, uh, and this fetcher only does this. It only does the fetch and only calls set cards when it's done. Mm -hmm. Tricky, tricky. So now I think that might grow. Okay, 95%. Hey, there we go. Um, cool. So now we have a fetcher that can fetch our cards. We don't need to have this function in here. We've cleaned up our app function a little bit. <laughs> and now we can reuse this in another component. So when I want to use it in another component fetches cards, I can do this. Otherwise, um, I can change the function to instead of just taking the callback, I can have it, you know, say, you know, I'm going to take an uh, optional argument. Uh, you know, method is going to equal get by default, and um, it's going to take some options. There, nothing by default. Uh, and then in here, I can say, oh, it's going to return the function that fetches from the cards API. Um, and maybe I'll throw in the options here. Uh, maybe I just have just options. Um, oh, and that means I can also put the headers in here and not have to worry about it ever again. So I can say, okay, here's our headers. I'm just going to take those out. It's getting a little messy, but const uh, headers is this. Uh, then I can say in these here, I can just say headers. Uh, I can say method because we have the method up here that's going to be get or whatever we say. So in here, we might say get rid of this. Um, and we might say use fetch. So before anything, I don't want to make sure the real one works. But here, I would say const, uh, what do I call it? Um, postcard. Postcard equals uh, use fetch. And I would say when it's done, I'm going to give it the callback, uh, which would be add new card. Um, I would be giving a method. So I would pass in post here. And then I'd pass in something here. I'd pass in the body there or whatever. Uh, and I would update this to include the body in here, do that stuff. And I would probably want to change it to return the um, return the promise. So I can do stuff with it, but um, this is the basics. Uh, if th 
I assure you that you will come across something in your project that you'll want to do uh, do a custom hook for, probably your own fetching. Um, so uh, this is just a little taste, a little toe in. Um, I, I think there's stuff, let, let me check the curriculum. There might be stuff in there already, but um, yeah, don't worry about this for next week at all. Uh, just put it as a bookmark in your head. Uh, we can definitely go over it more during project week because I think it's super fun. And I think pretty much every real project that I'm doing some sort of fetching or doing some configuration stuff or anything else, I almost always use some, at least a handful of custom hooks. But that's bonus sparkle material. Um, we got our basics working and we're at, we're at an hour. So um, yeah, I think aside from the fancy stuff, uh, any other questions you'd like to you know, address before we wrap it up? Cool. Yeah, that that uh, the, the custom hook stuff is a little bit of a so um, cleanse cleanse your palate after that. <laughs> um, hopefully, hopefully the the uh, user effect stuff and the hooking up fetches too. Um, uh, to event handlers uh, is enough for your brain for now. Um, cool. Last call for questions. All right. Uh, I'll post this video up uh, on a playlist and in the channel. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Holler uh, in the channel or otherwise if you have questions. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you at stand down. Thanks for hanging out.